Hey there! Today we're going to be expanding upon the previous video of using the joint data by creating the prefabs that we're going to be using for our interactions. And we'll be going over creating the hand objects as well as the bubbles themselves. Here's a quick demonstration of the bubble as well as the hand with the hand touching the bubble and the bubble disappears. And this is all pretty straightforward. So we're going to go ahead and hop into Unity and get started. So looking at our prefabs for the bubble and the hand, on the bubble we have a Circle Collider 2D as well as a bubble script that we've created. We've also tagged it bubble. And then on the hand we also have a Circle Collider 2D like we did before. We have the hand script as well as the rigid body 2D so we can have the trigger events. Now what we also have is a public field for the hand mesh. And the hand mesh is being childed to the hand prefab. And we can see that here, and it's essentially the object we used in the previous video to visualize the joints. So let's go ahead and hop into Visual Studio so I can show you why I did this. So the first thing we have are these two private variables. The vector 3 is going to be for the randomized movement direction, and the coroutine below that is what we're going to be using for actually changing the direction. And we're storing it so we can stop that coroutine once the object has been disabled. And looking at both the on enable and on disable events, we can see that we are starting the coroutine when the object is enabled, and then we are disabling that coroutine once the object has been disabled. Now this may not make a lot of sense right now, but as we expand upon this bubble script within the next video, you'll see how this coroutine is being used continuously throughout the object's lifetime. And now looking at the on became invisible event, we are simply turning off the game object once it is no longer seen by the camera. What's a little strange or interesting about this event is that it takes into account all of the cameras that are rendering the object. So if you're watching this in the scene view, the objects are actually not going to be disabled and they're just going to continue to float all over the scene until it's not rendered by any camera, both the game camera as well as the scene camera. But enough of that, let's move on to update where we're going to be changing our transform.position using our move direction. And we're going to be multiplying that by the time.delta time and just any sort of speed variable that you would want. And the final thing is this coroutine that we've called direction changer that we are running a while loop while the game object is active. And we're simply just getting a vector 2 that is a random range between 0 and 100. And then we're multiplying that by 0.01, and that's just to give us a value between 0 and 1. And we're doing that every 3 seconds. And that does about it for the bubble script. So let's go ahead and move on to the hand script. Where the first thing we have is that public transform variable that I showed you before, that we have for the childhood object, which is the hand mesh. And then with an update, we are linear interpolating the position of the hand mesh to follow the joint essentially. So what this is doing is that we have the collision directly on the joint itself as it's getting the data from the connect, but for the visual of the hand we want to smooth the movement out a little bit. And yes this isn't the proper way of using a lerp function, but for our particular instance it does the job just fine. Now let's move down to the on trigger enter 2D event. And if you're anything like me, you don't work in 2D a whole lot and you always forget to put the 2D at the end and it takes you 5 minutes to figure out why your collisions aren't working. So remember, use 2D. So on the first line here we're doing that tag check for the bubble and this is to prevent us from accidentally destroying one of our hands or both of the hands. But once we've passed that check we're going to be disabling that game object. And there you have it, you should have an object that moves around the scene and once you touch it with one of the hands, it should disappear. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and if you'd like to see the rest of the series, please feel free to subscribe. And I'll see you next time.